Hello, hello. Hey there, hey there. Welcome into another edition of Between the Lines, where we bring you inside the pages to read between the lines of what's in Success Magazine. This time, I'm joined by longtime writer for Success, Scott Bedgood. Scott, welcome. How's it going, Josh? So your piece for the July-August issue, one of your pieces, actually, there was another. We'll talk about that at some point, I'm sure. But uh, for the sales and marketing chapter of the magazine, it's called In Search of Whales, all about selling to wealthy people. Did you learn a lot, Scott? Have you, have you uh, flipped any million-dollar homes or anything in the couple of months since you wrote this? Yeah, actually, I opened up a Ferrari dealership. It's, I've lost a lot of money on it, but, um, you know, <laughs> of, I, I didn't, didn't have all my ducks in a row. Yeah. A lot of inventory. It's kind of tough uh, these days, but no, I actually learned a ton because I am not a salesperson. Uh, I am not, uh, certainly in the world of, of major wealth. And so the idea of the story was really interesting to me because I was like, I don't even know where to start because I think, and that's kind of what, how I approached the story was. My thought is, how could I ever sell a $50,000 watch to someone if I don't even wear a watch or if I don't even wear like a $20,000, you know? And so I was thinking like, okay, you have to kind of max out your credit cards. You have to put on this fake wealth, uh, air of wealth. If you're even going to talk to the person I use in the story of of Damon John, like if you're going to talk to someone who you're like, I know this person is one, super rich, and two, wears all the nicest clothing or has all the nicest cars. How could I even relate to them? And so that's where Ryan Serhant of Million Dollar Listing New York, um, who specializes in only selling to really, really rich people, uh, that's where his book, Big Money Energy, and speaking to him was really helpful because he wasn't a super rich guy when he started. Now he is. And I just asked him, I was like, do you kind of have to fake it till you make it? And he was like, absolutely not. It is not about faking it. It's about knowing your stuff. And the, you know, the number one piece of advice he gave was really rich people, they don't need you to save them money. They need you to save them time. Everyone wants their time. So if you're selling to them, you got to save them time. And honestly, I, again, I'm not actually selling Ferraris, but that's such good advice when you're talking to a CEO, when you're talking to your just your boss at work and you're going, how can I make myself more valuable as an employee? It's like, oh, I can save my boss time. I can save the CEO time. And so I thought that was a really interesting lesson. Yeah. So Ryan Serhant, you mentioned he is the, the lead source in the story. Um, and he kind of went through this same earlier in his career, this same um, sort of process you did where you um, you know, he, he had some, you know, a little bit of lack of confidence in his ability to, to sell to, to wealthier buyers. And, you know, we write about this because when you're selling to, you're selling to wealthier people, you're selling more valuable things. And a lot of times there's a lot higher margin on those things, right? So this is where the money is. Um, and he found himself in a position where uh, he lacked that confidence and he um, not so much Faked it, but he he is he he will admit that there's like a, a confidence costume that that he he learned to put on. Mm-hmm. I thought that was so interesting the way he um, had sort of a demarcation between fake it till you make it and the confidence costume because he tells the story in the book. Um, basically, he was middling real estate person, not making a lot of money didn't have designer, didn't have anything of wealth because he wasn't doing that well, but he was like, I want to do really well. I want to, you know, he wanted to be bigger. And he sort of started portraying himself or thinking of himself as Big Ryan, like the future version of himself. So Big Ryan would do X, Y, Z. Big Ryan would talk like this. He would know these facts. He would know these neighborhoods to sell to these wealthier clients. And he, the way he described it was that's different than faking it because faking it is you're not actually who the, you're not doing the thing. You're just kind of faking it. And so hoping people don't catch on. Whereas he was like, I hope people catch on because they'll see that I'm actually this future version of myself. Who's making a lot of money, selling big things, finding success. Who's really confident. Uh, And some of that was kind of actually the clothing. Some of it was just the persona. And a lot of it was the knowledge, the studying of 
the areas that he needed to study so he could sell to these clients. The studying of what uh, a client would need. Um, oh, they have kids, so they need to be close to this school or this school, or um, their hobbies are X, Y, and Z, so they want to be close to these places in New York. Those kind of things were more important than the actual costume. But he did say, look, I wore a fake Rolex for a long time just so I could think about one day I'm going to wear a real Rolex. Uh, he did say it turned his wrist green. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't perfect, but he, 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 he it, it was interesting. I thought it was very interesting the way he described some of those things that you might say, oh, that's kind of weird to wear a fake Rolex. But to him, it inspired him to get a real one, I guess. Big lesson there is preparation. I mean, it's, it's always key, but you know, when, when, when you're giving someone, um, and Damon John and, and the example of your story, but uh, really this sort of concierge treatment, you have to be ready to, to be the exact, uh, have all the answers to all their questions, to, to, to know them, um, to, to be the best, not the best salesperson in the world, which is kind of where you start the story, but the best salesperson for them on that day. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's, it goes all the way back to that time thing. Um, when you think about someone like a Damon John, I bet everywhere he goes, someone's pitching him a business because of Shark Tank. And then the other people that are talking to him are trying to get him to sell, to buy their product. And the other people are trying to get him, you know, everyone wants something from an ultra rich person. They probably have very few people who are actually sort of looking out for them. Now, of course, when you're selling something to them, you, you want something too, but it needs, it has to sort of be portrayed as like, you're helping them out and you're providing all of this value and you're saving them so much time because you've prepared and you know what Damon John wants. You've, I mean, especially when someone's famous, you can look up a lot of information about them to know exactly sure. what they want. Uh, but one thing I did ask Ryan, I was like, do you go into a meeting with an ultra rich person knowing everything there is to know about them? And he said, it's kind of a balance, which I thought was a really interesting take. He said, you want to be able to talk to them, interview them, learn some things in the conversation, but obviously you don't want to walk up to Mark Cuban or Damon John or whoever and be like, so what do you do for a living? You know, but you might you might have conversations that that can help you figure out his favorite type of watch or car or whatever it is. Uh, but it was so it was interesting because I thought he would say, yeah, oh, yeah, you need to know everything. But he's like, no, some of it needs to be that natural conversation without you just sort of already knowing the answer. Well, I, I loved you for this story, because as, as you said at the beginning, not a sales writer, not a sales expert, sometimes those fresh eyes can. Uh, really be illuminating for people who have been in the game for a while and, and need um, need to be able to see it from a totally new perspective. So thanks for the, sco the story, Scott. It was a great one. And I uh, appreciate you being a part of the, uh, the success team for so long. Yeah, thanks, Josh. It was a fun one to do. All right, everybody else, we'll see you next time with another edition of Between the Lines. So long, everybody. Mm -hmm.